Hi, thanks for tuning in to my Steam Party how-to videos. In this video we're going to talk about the Game Instance and how to integrate it into your project. So the Game Instance is a persistent class that stays from level to level. So once you load into from one map to the other map, this Game Instance will stay active and doesn't reset so all the data on it is persistent. So we need that to, to communicate for all the session and Steam handling uh, calls. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys don't already have a uh, game instance uh, created, we'll go ahead and create one now. We'll right click and we'll go to Blueprint Class and we'll go ahead and type in Game Instance. And you'll see Steam Beacon Game Instance. We'll select on that and we'll go ahead and name it GI for Game Instance underscore Air Fight. I prefer Battle, but I already have that one as an example. And then once we open that up, what we'll see is that uh, in the upper right corner we have parent class Steam Beacon Game Instance, so it took it correctly. Another way to check is to type in the category party, and you'll see the uh, party functions that come with the class and also the uh, Steam Beacon classes. So it looks like everything worked correctly. And then also on our details panel, we this is where we can set the max party count. So if we want eight players, we want four players, we want 10 players, we want 16 players. Uh, this is where you would set it at. So I'll go ahead and close this out, save it. Now, what if you already have a game instance class? Well, it's pretty easy to repair it. To, to do that, go to your custom game instance class, open it up, and on the upper left-hand corner, what we want to do is hit File and hit Reparent Blueprint, because right now it's parented to game instance. Hit Reparent, and we'll do the same thing, game instance. And look, there is Steam Beacon Game Instance. We'll click on that and compile, save. Now we're good to go. We have our max part account. Uh, variable to set here and if we open it in the full uh, blueprint we can double check also party and we do have the functions and the steam beacon functions so there we go success now that was the way to do it in blueprints uh, the, ne the, the next way I'm going to show you is how to do it in C++ uh, before I get out here I do want to go ahead and go to my project settings in case people don't know uh, how to set your game instance up for your map and your modes go to go to uh, project settings and then underneath there go to maps and modes At the very bottom you have a game instance this is where you want to select what game instance class you want to run so right now I want to keep it as uh, air battle alright so save it and I'm going to go ahead and close it the next piece you definitely need to close the editor you can't do a hot reload so we'll go ahead and go to the uh, C++ solution file and I already have it open here and I'll go ahead and go to my game instance.h uh, for my air battle. I'm using the standard U game instance. What I want to do is actually change that to um, the header file to game Steam Beacon Game Instance. So I'll go ahead and overwrite the, the other base class. And then I'll go ahead and take this and copy it underneath here for inheritance. U Steam Beacon Game Instance. And there we go. Uh, that will get a set for that file. But right now the uh, compiler doesn't know what Steam Beacon Game Instance. We need to tell it to build it into the compiler. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, what we need to do is go to the airbattle.build.cs. And for your project, it would be whatever your project name is, .build.cs file. Open that bad boy up. And once we're there, we want to go, and I want to start adding a couple more lines. At the very top, I want to add a uh, namespace using system IO so that we can use some other functions pretty easily. And then I want to add a couple missing modules that we need to have access to their API. So when you have like a module API, this is how you get access to their modules. You add it to your dependency modules in your CS file. So I'll go ahead and copy that here. So I copied in Steam Party and then also online subsystem because there's some files for the Steam sockets we need access to. All right, so now the next part is to, um, well, there's one file, there's one set of files we need access to specifically for the Steam sockets that is hidden in the uh, online subsystem Steam private folder. Whenever it's under a private folder in a different module, those are usually locked out, uh, but there is a way to, around that, and I'm going to go ahead and paste this over now to do that. And what this does, it builds a path to that directory um, from the engine directory plus the, the specific directory we want to make it available to us and uh, this unlocks it for um, uh, steam socket support I needed for the uh, the pack uh, the plugin itself so now this is how this will give us access that we desire to uh, with the mess with those steam classes so let's go ahead and save it and all we have to do now is go ahead and build it and that should take care of all the C++ side and when we go over back to the game battle instance uh, this will see it passed hopefully <laughs> Now, again, this is um, uh, the C++ side of it. It's pretty quick. Uh, once you set up the, the uh, build CS, you won't have to do that step again. 
when we go to the next videos, when we do the player controllers and the game session managers, uh, we won't have to repeat that because we already have the libraries uh, linked into the compiler, so they know what they are now. So it will be a lot faster for the other classes. Uh, again, uh, this is, uh, let's make sure it's going to compile here, and then I can get on to the next video. Yes, it did. So again, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll answer them the best I can. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.